Welcome back to another Geek What video. In today's video, I'm taking over the best $800 gaming PC build for the months of October and November 2015. This build is easily capable of smashing the latest AAA titles at 1080p and even uh, some of your favourite titles such as World of Warcraft, League of Legends, Minecraft, and CSGO at 1440p and 4K. 30 to 60 frames per second as well as insane frame rates at 1080p so without any further ado let's get into the build now the cpu is quite a hard choice i normally use the same cpu in my thousand and my 800 dollars builds as at this price point the cpus don't cause any significant bottleneck uh, so there's no point in upgrading it uh, however intel have only got one i5 out at the moment uh, as of release of this video that supports ddr4 ram and i thought of a build of a, such a high price point ddr4 ram really should uh, really is a kind of a compulsory thing so uh, for the CPU I went for the i5-6600K, it's the brand new CPU on the Skylake architecture from Intel, it's their highest end quad core i5 CPU, overclockable but comes out of the box at a healthy 3.5GHz and comes in at $245, a really really great CPU. Now if you didn't know, the K-series SKUs, uh, so the overclockable versions of all of Intel's latest Skylake CPUs will not come with a stock cooler, purely because if you're going to overclock it, you may, you really do need a, a third party cooler. So I went for the ever legendary Hyper 212 EVO. If you don't know, this is this CPU cooler is a staple within the gaming uh, PC community, and this CPU cooler is the most popular, the highest rated, and one of the best value at $25 coolers you can get, um, you can get really for any gaming PC build. For the motherboard, motherboards are still a little bit on the pricey side uh, with it being um, a brand new architecture. So I went for the ASRock B150M Pro 4S. It's a micro ATX motherboard uh, with support for four RAM DIMM slots with the LGA 1151 socket. That is very important. We've moved from 1150 to 1151 and that's what the Skylake CPUs uh, will use. That's the new socket design. And this motherboard is a DDR4 motherboard. You can get some DDR3 Skylake motherboards. However, there really, really is no point. For uh, RAM, I went for um, one 8GB DIMM of DDR4 2133. It's got to 2133 MHz on brand new DDR4. It's the Kingston High Prep stuff. It's got a slightly lower cast latency uh, than some of the other budget uh, DDR4 RAM options, which is really nice. Uh, it comes in at $45, and you can get this in black, white, red, or blue. And, um, and yeah, really, really great value uh, RAM set from Kingston. For the storage, I also went for um, something from Kingston, as well as a hard drive, so an SSD and a hard drive, uh, which really is the best sort of the best balance you can get because you want the mass storage for e games, your movies, your schoolwork, music, etc. But you do want that C drive, that really fast OS drive for your favourite games, uh, and, and you're and you're really quick to access OS and whatever. So for boot up times and your boot drive, you've got the Kingston SSD now V300. Uh, there was a bit of controversy over the controller they used in some of the older versions of this drive. However, in the new drive, they have changed the controller, uh, so the storage controller in the drive. So this drive should be, be absolutely brilliant, no problems. And for mass storage, I went for a one. One terabyte Sega Barracuda. One terabyte isn't a hell of a lot at this price point. However, I really did try and squeeze in the best at gaming performance I could. And a terabyte is twice the storage you get on the next-gen consoles, so the Xbox One and the um, the PS4. Uh, so you've got plenty of room for games. Even some of the biggest games only got to 60 gigabytes, uh, so you do have plenty of room for games on there. For the video card, I also went for something brand new. Brand new CPU, brand new RAM, uh, brand new motherboard, and a brand new GPU. It's the MSI Radeon R9 380. It's on AMD's new 300 series of cards. It's a four, It's got a 4 gigabyte frame buffer uh, which is helpful for the higher resolution so your 1440p and your and your, t and your 4k's and um, it's the uh, it's sort of their mid-range card in the 300 series and it comes in at a healthy 190 dollars which is really really great value anything on the nvidia side uh, as opposed to the amd side won't give you as much value not at the moment anyway and this card is absolutely great value for the case i went for one of my favourite cases, if not my favourite cases of all time. This case you can get it in black and blue, black and red, black, just white, or you can get the razor green and black edition. Uh, for this build I went for the all black, but you can change it up however you wish using the PC Power Picker link down in the description below. Uh, it's an ATX mid tower case, which means it will see our uh, micro ATX motherboard just fine along, along, as well as having a little bit of um, a little bit of space to work with either side. It comes in at $69, uh, cue the penis jokes in the comments below grow up anyway anyway um just just thought i'd add that in um the s340 in black is a great uh, great case for the money 
And for the power supply, I went for an 80 plus gold certified PSU with 650 watts um, of power output. This build does only output 381 watts, which means you could add another GPU in uh, in Crossfire later on down the line uh, without upgrading your power supply. So you could have another GPU for twice, uh, theoretically twice the gaming performance. It's 80 plus gold certified power supply and for $65, that is insane. The fact that it's fully modular also means you only uh, connect the cables that you need to connect. Uh, so you have no unnecessary cable clutter and no restrictions for airflow either and that is my insanely great $800 gaming PC build for the months of October and November 2015. If you do want a little bit more hard drive space and a killer graphics card like an insane 4K GPU, then uh, head over to my $1000 gaming PC build linked in the description below and in the card section right now uh, in the top right hand corner of your screen. Once again, thank you very much for watching. If you do build this or any of my other builds linked in the card section below, tweet me a picture at GeekWat and I'll be sure to retweet, comment, favourite, etc. Follow whatever you want me to do. And um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe and we'll see you in the next Geek of What video.